Hi, I'm John Borhack with VM Sources Virtualization. Thank you for continuing with Module 5 of our complimentary course about the free edition of the VMware Hypervisor, also known as ESXi. VM Sources Virtualization specializes in providing the highest quality VMware training and consulting available anywhere. In this module, we're going to download and install the VMware Converter. We're going to convert a PC to a virtual machine and then we're going to edit the properties of the converted virtual machine. Okay, here we are at an old Windows XP desktop and obviously the first thing we have to do is actually get the VMware converter. So what we're going to do is launch a web browser, browse to VMware, and locate the VMware vCenter converter under products and infrastructure and operations management. Then choose download. And after providing a username and password, we've downloaded the VMware converter to our desktop. As you can see, it's a little bit of a messy desktop, but one of the reasons that we would P2V or convert this machine in the first place is to preserve some of the old documents or settings that we had on an older desktop while moving on to newer hardware or newer desktops. So we're going to convert this desktop as is. We're just going to install the VMware converter right here. One of the easiest ways to implement the VMware converter is by installing it on the machine which is being converted. Although it is capable of remote conversions, that's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to choose run. Next, next, accept the terms of the license agreement, choose your install folder. All right, the local installation means we're going to convert this machine. If you choose a client server installation, that means you want to convert some machine other than the one that you're actually working on, which is more complicated. Okay, the installation is completed. We're going to run the VMware Converter client right now. This is a pretty simple interface. Depending on how you use it, converting your first machine is going to be very easy. All we need to do is select Convert Machine. Check out all of the different source types we can have. We can have a VMware infrastructure virtual machine, which means a VMware ESX VM. We can have a VMware workstation or other VMware virtual machine. We can convert a backup image or a third-party virtual machine or a Hyper-V VM. This is a very powerful tool to begin with. When we choose this local machine, it's going to take care of all of our authentication, so we don't need to worry about a username or a password. We've already signed on, so here we are. Let's move on. Now where are we going? Are we going to make this into a VMware ESX VM? That's what they mean when they say VMware infrastructure. They really mean VMware ESX server. Or are we going to make it some other type of VMware VM? And in fact, we're converting for our ESXi, so this is the correct choice. Now, as we all know, we don't have hostname resolution, so our IP address will work just fine. Root and our top secret password. Right away it logs onto our ESX server. You can see it sees our Windows 7 running. What would you like to name this this VM? And it has a name that corresponds to the physical PC's name and I'm just going to actually rename this converted 1. The reason is that I'm going to keep this VM in addition to the original physical PC, so I don't want to have any name conflicts once I get this machine converted. All right, where are we going to put it? Well, we don't have any more than one data store. The source disks are 16.02 gigabytes. What virtual machine are we going to use? All of this is going to work fine for us. So on this screen we see the conversion options. One of the most important things to consider is what data you're actually copying. Let's take a look at this screen in detail. 
we have the source volumes and one of these volumes is actually a mapped drive we don't want to convert that mapped drive so we're going to uncheck that another possibility we have is to increase or decrease the size of any of the volumes that we are converting that's a very powerful option we can take an old worn out server that's out of space and out of processor and put it onto our ESX give it new disks give it new CPU we can get a lot done that way we're not going to really make any changes to this particular machine except to not try to convert the mapped drive and then we're going to look at our networks and we're going to make sure to disconnect or not connect it power on the network adapter that way we won't have any host name conflicts when we first power on the virtual machine under advanced options we have the ability to install the VMware tools during the conversion this is really handy it saves you a little bit of time when we're done and we're going to go ahead and choose that and then choose next and once you've reviewed all of your settings go ahead and choose finish alright up here in the top we're gonna to see what we're doing our task ID this local machine the destination and the status and the amount of time estimated remaining what we'll do is we'll check back in a little bit and we'll see on the finished conversion how long it actually took and then we'll modify the properties of our virtual machine conversion is completed successfully let's compare the start time and the end time uh, it started at 1217 it finished at 1231 that means this conversion took just a little bit less than 16 minutes as compared to the hour that it estimated initially or the half hour that it showed most of the time the conversion was taking place this conversion actually went fairly quickly a lot of them work that way they'll show you a larger amount of time than you actually end up with when you're when you finish converting we don't need the VMware converter anymore so we're gonna close that and we're going to start the vSphere client. We're going to connect to our ESXi with the username root and our top secret password. And as we can see, our conversion is done. It's ready to power on, except before we power it on we want to make sure to right click on this virtual machine and choose edit settings and check out the hardware properties of the converted virtual machine uh, look at all this hardware for example this is true of a lot of conversions you're going to end up with tons of hardware that you don't actually need as a virtual machine let's just go line by line and consider the hardware that's been provisioned on this virtual machine memory two gigs I don't see any reason to change that processor one seems fine to me the video card the SCSI controller and all the disks obviously those are critical parts of this system now whether or not you need a CD drive that's a matter of choice a lot of virtual machines actually don't need a CD drive but if you need to install the VMware tools if you need to install software from ISO having the CD drive there is useful the network adapter of course is not connected at power on that's going to allow us to start the virtual machine and give it a new name before we connect it to networking floppy drive wow how long has it been since anybody's used a floppy disk I mean seriously let's just go ahead and get rid of this floppy disk and the serial port that's also somewhat obsolete although I do keep an old PC around to connect to hardware switches and such but we're not going to need to do that on a virtual machine moreover the serial port is not only connected at power on but it's connected to the physical serial port on the ESX server that consumes resources both on the ESX server and on the virtual machine so we're gonna go ahead and remove that serial port we're gonna remove the second serial port and we're gonna remove the parallel port all of these devices consume resources both on the virtual machine and on the ESX server so it's a good idea to get rid of everything you don't actually intend to use once we've gotten rid of all the unnecessary hardware click on OK and as with all virtual machines we open a console window power our virtual machine on
And here we are at our completed Windows desktop, which should be more or less a replica of our physical machine. We can now choose to rename our converted windows. And when our computer restarts, we'll be all set to connect back to the network. And not only do we have our physical workstation, but we have our virtual machine, which is now an identical or nearly identical replica of that physical workstation. That concludes Module 5 of VM Source's complimentary course in the free VMware hypervisor. We downloaded and installed the VMware converter on an old Windows XP physical PC. We converted that physical PC to a virtual machine. We edited the properties of the virtual machine and removed lots of unnecessary hardware. Then we powered on the virtual machine and changed its name so as to avoid network conflicts with the existing physical PC. To continue with Module 6 or learn more about virtualization, visit www.vmsources.com. Thanks for watching.